Okay, Jay Shiger has joined Scott and Kevin, so let's get to After Hours. Scott, over to you. Ron, thank you very much. Yes, pleased to have with us uh, Stanley Cup champion J.S. Shiger, veteran of a dozen years in the NHL, and uh, now the answer to some of Colorado's goaltending woes. You certainly were in the uh, come-from-behind OT victory over the Islanders here on Thursday night. So, let's start with this. How is life in Colorado after a decade of relative privacy in uh, in Anaheim, Southern California, and a year and a half in the center of the hockey universe, Toronto? Well, you know, uh, we're, we're really pleased to be here, my family and I. You know, I think it's a, it's a great city to live in. You know, people are, are very friendly. Uh, a lot of things to do for the kids, uh, and the organization's been great. You know, it's a very family-oriented uh, organization. So when they called me up this summer, that was a no-brainer for me. You know, I thought it was a great place for me to go. Now, do you know Pierre Lacroix? Have you had a relationship with Pierre from back home in Quebec? I did. Uh, he was my first agent mm -hmm. when I was growing up, and uh, you know, I uh, you know I knew him a little bit. You know, I I, I was able to to be with him for a year before I switched over with, with Bob Sauvé. You know, when he uh, when Pierre went GM. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think uh, you, you know that family is such a, a great family, Eric and. Uh, and Pierre and all, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, his sons and stuff. So, uh, you know, they're very family oriented, like I said, and uh, it shows all around the organization. So, uh, I, I want to ask you a question about tonight's game, Jazz, before we start talking more about your life. Uh, when Varlamov got beat for two goals on two shots, mm -hmm. you're on the bench. You've got to be thinking, I'm going in. Well, you know, I mean... Uh, the decision is yeah. yours, of course. <laughs> right. But you get that feeling, right? Yeah, you, you get yeah. that feeling. Yeah. You know, and I was just looking straight ahead. I wasn't looking at the coach. Right, exactly. Yeah. I know that one. Yeah, you're like, yeah. Man, you I'm know. not here right now. Yeah. I'm not seeing you right now. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, you know, I think the coach really wants to give early some confidence right now. He's struggling a little bit. Uh, you know, he's had a great start. We all know how good he can be. And uh, for this team to be successful, to be honest, we need Vardy to play well. And uh, uh, I thought it was, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of times coaches show uh, signs of not being patient. And, uh, you know, sometimes you need them to be patient. And, uh, you know, I think Vardy had a good second half. Uh, and, you know, hopefully that uh, he's going to get a bit of confidence with the coach leaving him in the net. All right, let's talk about how you ended up here. Uh, here's a quote from you uh, in October, I think, of 09 when you were dueling Jonas Hiller in Anaheim for the starting job, and uh, you wanted it back desperately. You'd been hurt and you came back, and the quote uh, essentially was you saying that uh, I'd rather retire than be a backup goaltender. So question is, of all the options you had in the offseason, why did you take the one in Colorado when you knew coming here that you would be prim primarily the backup to Varlamov? Well, yeah, you know, there was a, a few reasons. I, I didn't think I was going to be able to get a number one job somewhere. You know, I had a tough two years, my last two years, you know, with injuries and uh, losing my job to Hiller, losing my job in Toronto, too. So uh, it's pretty tough. So at some point, you know, I, I realized, you know, if I want to keep my career going, uh, you got to go somewhere where to be a backup. And uh, I thought this was a good fit for me, a young guy, uh, you know, trying to uh, be a good teammate to him, you know, be a good mentor. Uh, which I'm comfortable with, you know, I, uh, I like to show a good example and work hard and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the long season, you don't know, you know, they offer me a two year deal, which mm -hmm. is, was great. And uh, you don't know what can happen, uh, you know, along the road. So, uh, uh, you know, I was I was comfortable with that. I'm happy with my situation right now. Uh, you always want more, you know, that's course. just the nature of the game. Sure. But uh, in the same time, you know, I know what my role is right now, and I'm right. comfortable with that. So times change, and if you're clear thinking, you're, you're, you you change with them. <laughs> Here's a tweet. We're going with the iPad here tonight uh, to nice. make it easier for me to organize the tweet. That's tweets. Nice. Um, <laughs> Next level. And, yeah. Uh, this is from the Goalie Guild. Um, what does Jaguar see in Varlamov that sets him apart from other 23-year-old goalies in the NHL? Well, you know, uh, he, he's got an amazing talent. You know, he's uh, extremely quick. He can make a, a save. You know, like he in practice, you watch him. Guys are have, have a really hard time beating him. So always a good sign. You know, I think he's uh, he's a kid that works hard. He's always the first guy on the ice. You know, he stays after. He wants to do goalie drills. You know, he's very uh, into his game, trying to get better and stuff like that. So for 23 years old, that's not always easy to do. You know, you don't see that very often in a 23 years old. And, uh, you know, I think he's got the whole package, you know, and I think, uh, uh, you know, with the rest of the team here, which we're very young, mm -hmm. he's going to grow with them. And I think uh, in a few years from now, this team should be pretty dangerous. Talk a little bit about the difference in your mindset in having this role, how you approach practice, how you prepare every day. Because for the viewers that might not know, it's certainly very different than being the main guy carrying the ball all the time. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think, uh, you know, your practice become even more important. You know, I think you almost need to approach every practice like it's a game. You know, you need to, uh, so I go out there, I try to make every save. I try to make sure that 
you know, when I get to play, then I'm ready for six, a full 60 minutes, you know, and uh, you can afford not to be in good shape. You can afford not to have a good outing because you can play maybe once every two weeks. And then, right. you know, it's a long two weeks <laughs> if you have a bad <laughs> game. That. So, yeah, that's true. You know, so it's uh, the, the practice are very important. Uh, I've always taken a lot of pride in my practices. You know, I think it's always been very important for me. I always believe that uh, the way you practice is the way you're going to play. That's right. And it's even more so right now. Before we go any further, are you a fan of the group Coldplay? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know who Chris Martin is? Sort of, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it's true that you and Chris Martin have never been seen in the same room together. There's Chris Martin. <laughs> and there's you. Nice. Okay, now, look nice. up to the left. Do the same pose here. Uh, no, the, other way. Way. the other way. Yeah, the other left. There we go. There we go. I'd say it's just about perfect. Uh, <laughs> is that ringer, the first maybe. time that striking likeness has been pointed out to you? Yeah, that's the first time. Ah, we've yeah. broken new ground yeah. here See? on After Hours. See? <laughs> All right, uh, JS, generation of Quebec kids were inspired to play goal by yeah. Patrick Waugh. Does this picture tell us uh, that you were inspired by him as well? Oh, absolutely. You know, and... Uh, I was not a Montreal Canadian fan whatsoever. You know, I was a big Quebec Nordics fan. Mm -hmm. uh, except, you know, you couldn't help but like Patrick Roy. You know, I think if you were a young goalie from Quebec, you wanted to play like him. You know, you wanted to uh, uh, do exactly what he did. And uh, a lot of us went to Francois Allaire's goalie school and Benoit Allaire too. And uh, those were, you know, great school to learn, you know, the technique. And uh, those guys were ahead of their time, you know, right. in those days. And uh, it really helped a lot of us, I think, uh, uh, becoming good players. And I always believe, too, that young kids that, were a lot, that had a lot of talent growing up wanted to be goalies instead right. of being a, being a forward because we had a guy like Pacheco uh, as an idol. Well, the story behind that picture was what? Uh, that was uh, us, uh, yeah, P Quebec Pee Wee tournament. And uh, uh, when you were Patrick first... was playing in the Quebec Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was yeah, playing. He was, was backing him up. I was yeah, he was backing back him up. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, that uh, that day we had a practice. He gave me a stick. Oh wow! And uh, I haven't lost thrill. one game with that stick. My dad had to glue it three times. Oh really? No yeah, way. yeah. And uh, we wow, won, yeah. we won the Quebec championship that year and everything. So uh, uh, that was a uh, you know I, I wish I still had the stick. That'd be a great story. Yeah. Absolutely would. Um, only two players from the Hartford Whalers organization are still active in the NHL. You and quick get the other one. Nice <laughs> uh, for Philadelphia right now. Yeah, big. Philly, he's yeah. mean. He's big, tough. Big. Oh, it's tall. Chris there you go. Correct. Yeah, easy. There you go. Uh, and you're real easy. Yeah. <laughs> you were drafted in the first round by Hartford in '95, and uh, I think we've got pictures of your draft day. And we just want to say, JS, that you were looking good on this. <laughs> Is that day. A young Jimmy uh, Rutherford. Too? There you are. Oh my God. Wow. I love it. I love the quaff too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Is there anything you want to say about I like that? that? I just wish I had that, that much hair still. Like, I like no, it, though. That's a good hair. Oh, that's smooth. Yeah. That's smooth. Uh, anyway, you played a few games in Hartford at the end of that season, or the end of the next season. The Whalers then traded you to Calgary, uh, where you went around in circles for four years. And it was starting to look like it was not going to pan out for a first-round draft pick. How concerned were you? I, I was pretty concerned. Uh, my last... Uh, you no, know, a year in, in Calgary, I finished my, uh, I think I lost my last 17 games with the St. John Flames. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, that was a big concern for me. I, uh, I was going nowhere. Technically, I was absolutely awful. Uh, you know, I think Calgary in those days, we had, you know, a lot of first round pick in the team. Right. Uh, we ended up with just one coach in the minors, which, you know, not always a good thing. You know, I think they, right. uh, you know, your minor league team, you should put a lot of, you know, people, resources for them right. to develop. and and work with the young guys and uh you know and uh so when i got traded to anaheim that was a, a big relief for me right away i started working with francois Allaire, and I, I got a lot of confidence right off the bat and uh, that was a big change for did me. that save your career absolutely no doubt you know i don't think i would be sitting here right now without having working with francois uh you know i'm a guy that i like working hard you know mm -hmm. it's never been a problem for me mm -hmm. but i've never been uh, a guy that you know, I had a huge talent. You know, I've never been uh, like a Martin Brodeur where he can make saves, you know, in any, any way possible. You know, for me, mm -hmm. technically, i got to be as strong as possible. You know, it's got to be uh, uh, what pulls me out of every game. And uh, Francois really gave me that technique. No, you guys were ahead. You talked about being ahead of the curve because a lot of you as pro goalies in Quebec were going to goalie school with Francois and Benoit. A couple of us did that in Ontario, and it certainly helped us. But maybe for the viewers, tell them how important that is and how you never stop learning, even if you're at the NHL level, instead of just going to the rink and, and playing shinny like a lot of guys do. Yeah, you know, uh, you, you, you learn every day with, uh, with a guy like him. You know, there's always something to work on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you can never let it go. You know, if you haven't worked on something for a month, you got to bring it back and start working on it. Even though it's going well in a game, uh, you know, it, it might the situation might happen and, and you, you have to make sure that it's 100 percent.
uh, you know, ready to go. And, uh, uh, you know, this is the way I approach the game. You know, I still do this, even though I'm not working with Francois right now. I, I try to make sure that I go around everything that I do, you know, every save that I make. And uh, the key thing, I think, for my technique is just to keep it simple. You know, Technically, he made you a brilliant goaltender. So here's a question from, uh, it's a Twitter question from huge underscore avs underscore fan. And his name is Garth. He's from Boulder, Colorado. He wants to know, does it bother you that people in the past attributed so much of your success to the size of your equipment? It's not the first time you've heard that. <laughs> no, I, I've heard that many times, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, I, to be clear with everybody, I think we always had rules. You That's know, right. we always yeah. had, uh, the NHL always had rules. Uh, they used to be bigger, you know, and I was always one of the guys, you know, if they're going to allow me this much, I'm going to go this much. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go underneath it. And, uh, you know, and I still am at the maximum right now. You know, if I'm allowed 9 inches, you know, 11 inches pad, this is what I'm going to go with. And, and uh, uh, but, you know, my equipment is part of me. You know, I, I, I make sure that my equipment is right every day. And it has to uh, the league. For a lot of fans that don't know, you guys don't get the equipment directly. No, no, the, the equipment right. are days to goes to the league. To the league. They have to sign it off, you know, and they, uh, every once in a while, they come and check it, you know, and uh, they haven't done it in the last couple of years, but, uh, uh, and I think they probably should st still do that, but uh, uh, after games, they pull you out, and they, right. they measure your equipment, make sure that it's all legal, make sure that you don't tweak it once you got it, and uh, it's, you know, it's check, and, uh, but, you know, to say that, I think your equipment is important, you know, you got to make sure that your equipment fits your style, the style mm -hmm. you play, and, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I've never cheated, I think, you know, it, it'd be wrong to do that and you know I, I, I can't say that with uh, uh, conscience you know okay it's good to have you with us because when we come back we're going to discuss one of the greatest goaltending performances of all time and uh, what a coincidence it was by our guest J.S. Jaguar <laughs> back in 03 so more to come on After Hours in the Pepsi Center in Denver in a moment Welcome back to Denver, Colorado, as we continue with After Hours at the Pepsi Center. And our guest, J.S. Jaguar of the Colorado Avalanche, your performance in the 03 Stanley Cup Finals still remains one of the greatest goaltending shows of all time. Mm. The 63-save triple OT win against Detroit. You drove the wings out of the playoffs <laughs> in four straight. You allowed Minnesota one goal in the entire Western Conference Final. Won the Conn Smythe, even though you lost the Stanley Cup in seven to New Jersey. Uh, how do you look back on 03? Well, you know, I look back as a, as a great experience. You know, I think, uh, you know, if I didn't go through that experience in 03, I don't think I would have, you know, maybe win the cup in 07. So I think uh, uh, we went in there and, you know, we, we, we just wanted to get some experience. You know, Fran like we had a game plan, Francois and I, and we just wanted to go, you know, we, one game at a time and just try to get some good experience and try to build for the future. And uh, uh, the key things with that, those playoffs is I felt ready. You know, I felt mm -hmm. prepared. I had a great preparation throughout the year. We had a, a team that was working really hard. We played a, a real good defensive game. And, uh, you know, I went in there with so much confidence. And... Uh, uh, you know, it was a good time. Tweet from Dipster Tweet, uh, Dipster T, pardon me. Uh, <laughs> due to the rare nature of it, because you were just the fifth player from a losing team to win the Conn Smythe Trophy, um, how did it feel when you won the Conn Smythe with uh, the Ducks losing the Stanley Cup to the Devils? Well, you know, I, I'm real proud of this. We've footage of it here before yeah. you answer, and it looks oh, to me go. like you're trying to give it back to Gary Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I don't want anyway. it. Yeah. I don't want it. Yeah, it was, you know, it's a tough situation. I'm, you know, looking back, you're, you're really proud of yourself. You know, it's something that uh, obviously it's a good achievement, and, and I'm proud of that. Uh, it's not the trophy you want. You know, it's not, yeah. you, know, you want the one that you can share with your teammates that you can, you know, just, uh, you, you know, I, I mean, there was no, nobody left yeah, on the ice on my team. <laughs> exactly. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Right. I was like, yeah, and we I've just heard, lost and, the Stanley Cup final. Excuse me, as I skated um, over with is the everybody here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody's booing in the stands. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. But it was nice, actually. The first thing he did there is he told you that you deserve it. I just read his list. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, that was yeah. really no, nice. I, you know, it was that's a, a tough situation, right? Yeah, it's right? a tough situation. Like, but, uh, like I say, I was proud of it. And yeah. uh, uh, it's the second best time I've had in hockey. Now, one question, though to that did yeah. you guys make any adjustments from your game plan you talked about your game plan with Francois there from that year to the next year when you guys actually to when you guys won the cup did uh, you make any changes not not really I mean uh, in, in the four year span mm -hmm. I think uh, you know there's probably a few things that we change over the time but for the most part we, we kept the same way you know we uh, we always prepared the same way mm -hmm. uh, Frankie is you know for the last 25 years hasn't changed much yeah he believes in his drill he believes in the technique that he, he wants you to play in and uh, I truly believe in it too so we uh, we pretty much kept the same way got a question about your father here I think a graphic question um, and here it is 
This is from Chris in Moncton via Facebook. How much of an influence did your dad, quote, have on your hockey career? Well, just like any other kid that plays in the NHL, I think her dad was a huge, you know, factor in the, uh, in us being there. You know, uh, uh, my mom as well too. You know, my my whole family for that matter. You know, we 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 uh, had five kids growing up. Uh, you know, it wasn't always easy. We didn't have a lot of, of money. You know, we had one car to drive everybody to the rink. Everybody was playing hockey. My and he bought you used too. hockey equipment, used goalie equipment to exactly. start. Exactly. Yeah. Jo- uh, Justin Thibault, my first skates I ever had was from him. You know, my first goalie skate. Yeah, that's unreal. Now yeah. You guys both yeah. end up playing in yeah, the show, exactly. too. So, Are you getting new stuff, stuff now? Uh, yeah, I'm Sometimes. getting new stuff, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of nice. But my dad had a great influence. They had to mortgage our house twice yeah. to just yeah. get me equipment, you know, as I was growing up. So, uh, not easy. We had a paper route that we did as a family to pay that's for sports. Stuff. and. Uh, you know, I, obviously, I wish he would still be yeah. here. But, uh, you know, the good thing is, uh, you know, he, he was there when we won the Cup. Yeah, right. exactly. And uh, he was able to do three uh, dad strip that we do now in the NHL. You know, nice. and, yeah. uh, those were the best time he's had, you know. So uh, he, he had a good time. Yeah, he passed away December of 08 with cancer. But you're right. He saw you at the highest moment of your career when you won the Stanley <laughs> Cup. Um, April of 07, the start of the Stanley Cup run, you and Kristen had your first child, Max. And he was born with one eye. Now, any of us who've ever had children, worry about the health of our kids so how tough was it to come back to the ducks and focus on winning the stanley cup it was tough you know uh it was probably the hardest time of my life uh you know it's not something that that we expected you know obviously and uh it really caught us by surprise at the time that he was born there was a question whether he he was even seeing from his uh good eye you know And, and that was uh that was really tough and we had to do some exam you know see a lot of specialists and uh the docs organization were great in getting us to see doctors and uh we were really blessed with with you know having you know being able to see the best doctors in the world and it's great stuff. uh you know we were so blessed and uh when we found out that his his eye was 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 good you know that he could see real well from his good eye uh, you know, we're relieved now. You know, he's got a one eye, and we're just so happy because right. you know, we made you know, it kind of put everything into perspective sure. that you know, you can have a good life with one eye. And he's just like any four years old right now, running around and uh, just starting to skate, uh, you know, two weeks ago, starting yeah. to play hockey. So, uh, uh, we're very excited. So, you and Kristen look at uh, Max now as though he has no limits. Oh, he has no limits. You know, I think he, he'll be able to do whatever he wants in life. Uh, you know. Is there going to be some limits? You know, mm. possibly. You know, obviously there's things that you can't do, uh, having just one eye. But I think if he puts his mind into some, doing something, right. uh, you know, which we really believe in. We had some people, you know, fans in Anaheim uh, or around, you know, North America writing us letters and, and telling us their story about, you know, hey, I lost my eye like this and I'm well, doing this yeah. and stuff like that. And great support. Yeah, great support. And, uh, you know, the, the, we'll, we'll never forget that. J.S., thanks for your time. Thanks it's great to have you on the program. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it a lot. It, Thank you. You guys are great. All right. J.S. Jaguar, the Colorado Avalanche, our guest. Uh, thanks again to him. And there's Ryan O'Reilly standing by to join us when we come back to the Pepsi Center in Denver, Colorado.